Hi everybody, welcome back to Arthur's Open Road. Today we are back on the bus. I uh, haven't made a whole lot of progress since my last update due to weather and a little bit of being under the weather, but we're back. And today we're going to do something kind of interesting, at least for me. Um, I am working on installing a reverse camera. Uh, not a backup camera per se, but a reverse camera. One that is going to be on full time and I'll be able to see behind the bus so that'll help me both in backing up and, uh, you know, if I'm in heavy traffic and I'm a little concerned that my mirrors aren't showing me, you know, good, uh, good visuals, I'll be able to have the camera to kind of see what's behind me and, and help with that a little bit. So I'm going to flick this around and I'm going to show you what I've got, the particular camera that I've got. It's nothing special. It's just a cheap old camera off of Amazon. Um, but I can put the link down in the description for that particular item. One really cool thing about this, uh, camera is the way it switches and let me flick so this is the camera uh it's actually technically a license plate camera as you can see by the mounting bracket but i'm not going to use it for the uh for the the license plate obviously because that's going to be a bit off i'm going to install it a bit higher and i'll show you here in a second exactly where i'm going to install that at and why uh, here's the front of the box if you want to see it, it's not expensive. You can get it on Amazon. Um, it's probably a knockoff that's got a lot of different brands on it. Let me see if I can find a model number or anything. So there's the model number for it. Um, again, I'll throw a link down in the in the description uh, for this for this particular camera for anybody who's you know interested in checking it out. Um, now, <clears throat> the really cool thing. Uh, is this little jigger right here. So there's two ways you can wire this camera up. One is, let me show you the cables real quick. So here's the cable. And you'll know, and you'll notice that the cable has, th these are both ends of the cable that I've got right here. And you'll notice one end has two plugs and the other end just has one. Now this, if you'll see the little prongs down in there, this, is the actual um, video from the camera. This one is what hooks up to the power. Now this particular camera hooks up to power two different ways. So if you're running it from the back of the bus, let me see what I did with it. It's got a little, right here it is. It's got this little adapter right here that you will tie this into your backup lights or whatever wire that will function. Uh, to trigger it to come on with backup, or if you're doing like I'm doing in reverse camera, you'll just trigger it to whatever you're going to have for continuous power, and then that hooks up into the other to the other end of the cable, um, along with the video. Now this is for if you're going to do this as a backup camera. So it, so this will hook up into your reverse lights. When your reverse lights come on, it will trigger the power. the The camera will then come on and show an image. On this monitor however if you turn the cable the other way and put this towards the front of the bus instead of the back so then your power would run off of this thing right here which is basically a cigarette lighter adapter with a power end then you can run it as I'm going to be running it as a full-time reverse camera and this little button right here is your power button so that's that's really kind of cool. I didn't know that when I bought it. I just bought it as a you know a cheap uh, reverse camera so that I could have it on the bus. I didn't know it had this kind of cool functionality. So that that's going to help a whole lot, um, both in how I'm wiring it uh, and you know when I can turn it on and off and things like that. So that's going to be really cool. Now I have started to take apart back up a little bit the the front of the air conditioner on the back of the bus. Because what I want to do is utilize these two existing holes to run my cable along the inside of the bus. Now, these channels are going to come down, obviously, during the build. But for now, I'll be able to run that cable all along this channel. Then inside the box here, right there, be able to run it inside the box. Then run my wiring down inside here. And then wherever I'm going to put the camera, you know, from the dash or mount it. Now, this camera also has two ways of mounting it. I'll go back here again and show you on the camera. 
So, yeah. All right, one way. This sorry, this camera only has one way. So, here's your little suction cup mount to stick it to whatever. So you can either attach it to the dash if you've got that kind of hard shell dash that you want to stick it to, or like in our buses, you know, we've got this, we've got this nice metal that it'll stick to. So if you've got something up there on your dash or above your head where you want to clean that off real good and just hook it up there, and then obviously the camera will hook into that. It'll just slide down and you'll be able to see that. Um, I chose this version instead of the kind that uh, to your stereo for multiple reasons. One, if something happens to the camera, um, backing up and I accidentally back into something, a tree, or like if I'm out camping and a tree falls off, knocks the camera off, and I end up having to get a different camera and rear-end wire. I don't have to pull the stereo out to do that which is nice. I've had to do that in other vehicles where something happens to the camera and then I've got to rerun the whole thing. So that entails pulling out the stereo, getting in there and hooking the wiring and then rerunning the wiring. Uh, so that was kind of a deciding factor on I, why I wanted to do this this way with a separate display. Um, I could also have gotten one that would display it in my uh, dash cam because I always have a dash cam. There's one on this bus. I could have also got one that would display in the dash cam, but the dash cam has such a tiny screen. I mean, this one's not huge. Um, you know, as you can see, you know, this screen isn't huge, but it's going to take the full screen uh, where a lot of those dash cams, you know, the little video box is only like half the half the mirror or, or whatever. Um, if you've got the kind that goes in the mirror, which is what the kind I usually have. And I didn't want that real tiny image to have to strain to look and see what was going on. And, and the other thing is, uh, you know, if I'm going to use this full time, I don't want to hook it into my dash cam because I need to actually see my mirror. Again, I have the mirror style dash cam. Um, so I wanted to be able to see the mirror uh, instead of uh, just seeing the image and then wondering what's behind me. Because I still use my rear view mirror a little bit. I actually look out, uh, I usually look out this window here some when I'm changing lanes or backing up or doing whatever. And I know the camera's supposed to help with that, but you know, the camera, the camera's great, but nothing beats, uh, you know, eyeball 2.0. You don't rely on the technology a hundred percent. You, uh, you rely on your own, you know, visual checks as, as much as you can. You're always looking, always monitoring those mirrors. But enough about that. Let's see where we're gonna where we're gonna mount this thing on outside of the bus. Okay, so where I have selected is actually going to be pulling up one of these marker lights because this marker light, as you can see, I've kind of got it pulled up already, and it's got a grommeted hole through the bus. Um, and I'm gonna put it through there. And then it's going to come into one of those holes. Now, you can see a hole here where I thought I was originally going to put it here. I drilled into that and, and I failed to take into account where the AC placement was in the rear. So that kind of burned me. This, come, this hole comes in right behind the AC unit on the inside and I can't manipulate the wires. So I did a big boo-boo there. Uh, I'll cover that up and patch that. Uh, make it waterproof so I don't have to... Um, worry about leaks or anything like that but that that was me getting excited about having the camera and getting ahead of myself and just you know if you're that kind of person like me just slow down take your time pay attention to what you're doing do your measurements and look at the other side of wherever you're drilling holes most of you are going to laugh who are who are seeing this and go ha, yeah why didn't you think about that and that's true i'll take that um you know, I got a little bit of a hurry, got excited. It's beautiful weather out here. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to get back to this and make some stuff happen. So back inside. Now that little hole where I showed you is going to come in right there. Now I know you all probably cannot see that. There we go. Turn the flash on. It's going to come in right behind that pipe right there. There are the set of cables, cords, whatever. Right, so it's going to come in right here. I'm going to grab it, pull it down, and run it through this hole or this hole. This hole's open. This one's behind, as you can see, a steel plate. Um, but I'm going to try to run it through this one. And then for right now, just run it along here until it gets to this channel. 
So that being said, that being said, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I did was I ran a piece of wire through that grommeted hole from this side. What I'm gonna do is push that all the way through, tape the end of the cable that's gotta come out that side of the bus, this one, I'm gonna tape it to the wire and then pull it through. It's what a lot of electricians do when they're trying to run wiring through some tight places. We're gonna see if this is gonna work. There's the wire where I'm gonna pull that through. Of course, I'll fish it through this hole because that little plug is not gonna reach on here, but I'll fish it through that hole. I've uh, tapped out the grommet on the other side a little bit to make the hole a little, just a little bit bigger. And we're gonna go from there. And as soon as I get this through, I'll be right back. Okay, the cable is taped. I'm gonna try pulling on the wire. Let's see where that sucker is at. Way up there. Okay, so. Let's try this. Let's see where we get. All right. All right, I've got to set you guys down for a minute. Okay, as you can see, I managed to get the cable through that we're gonna need, and that's gonna give me plenty of length to get that. Oop. That's gonna give me plenty of length to mount that where I need to mount that. So step one is done as far as getting the wire. Then I'm gonna actually mount the camera uh, to the bus. This is aluminum, I believe. Uh, we'll check and see if it's aluminum or steel. Uh, here in just a second but i'm going to mount the camera somewhere around somewhere around in here there we go somewhere around in here you know when i fill this up i may just mount the camera over it uh you know for the aesthetics of it just to get rid of that big ugly patch that i'm going to do to it um and that'll give me a good wide view over the back of the bus not just at the bumper level but kind of seeing you know a little bit higher that way if there's any branches or anything like that so i'm going to figure out where i'm going to mount this um let's see the what i'll do with my tape measure yeah right here so one of the things that i want to do is i want to measure just how wide the bolt holes sorry just how wide the bolt holes are on the camera and they are exactly seven inches all right, now, I already know that the center of this little area by this indention that says school bus is 40 inches. This right, this hole is dead center. So I know if I'm gonna put it here, I need to go three and a half inches on either side to mount my screws. So not a big deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera up here, mark my lines where I'm gonna drill uh, or put my self tappers in whichever I got to see if I have some self tappers and then go from there So okay friends as you can see I've got her installed I actually found some self tappers that I had pulled out of the wiring mess uh, That I showed in one of my previous videos. So they were there and readily available. They were the right size had the nice flat topped screw ends so that was really nice Got the wire ran up through. I ended up having to pull the cable off the end of the camera back through the hole because there was such a length here that it left me like two feet of wire. And that's actually good because it puts the connector back inside the bus. And then I was able to screw this back down and I'll be able to reinstall the lights and put the cap back on it. And then that will still be waterproof. I won't let any water in, won't let any leaks in or anything like that. So that's really cool. I'm happy that I was able to get that done pretty quick. Um, I drive my bus to go pick up things and sometimes I just leisurely drive it. I love driving my bus. But having this camera here is gonna be a really nice uh, addition to safety as I drive it. Um, I'm not used to driving anything quite this big, um, but I love it, love it, love it. So let's go inside. And again, this is where the cable comes out. So what I will do is feed the rest of the cable in probably through that hole and have it come along the edge like we talked about. Okay, so not quite finished yet, but as you can see, I've got the wires 
in. I've got it tucked all the way in along this rail, like we talked about. Managed to sneak it up through there. It comes inside this box. I was able to get it wrapped around the rail. And then use already an existing hole to come down, run along the sun visor and down to here. Now, currently it's a mess of wires that I've still got to clean up. Uh, but as you can see, functionality is there. The bus is running, so I have to turn, notice, It's running as long as the bus is on. So I'm gonna turn the bus off. Turn the lights off. Close the door. Oh, forgot cigarette lighter's on. There we go. And then plug the cigarette lighter back in. And it's on. Because it's running off the cigarette lighter, I can even do it when the bus is off. Push the button. Push the button. There we go. So the bus doesn't even have to be running to turn on my backup camera. Or my reverse camera, I should say. Now, I don't have a huge... Uh, field of vision with it because of the way I chose to point it down pretty tight so I could literally see the back of the bus But at the same time, I've got a nice little distance back there where I can see if anybody like a child is behind me Not just the bumper level, but if a child is behind me playing or if there's something a few feet behind me I think that's showing up to about 12 feet 15 feet away uh, Doesn't sound like a whole lot, but anything when it comes to visibility is going to be an improvement on the back of the bus so uh, next step, at least for this little bit, um, I'll put a grommet here because I don't want that rubbing. I've got some grommets. Uh, you can just pick up grommets at your local uh, auto place. They can help you pick those out. But I'll put a grommet here to keep that from running. Similar to what I did right here. Um, I'll also put a grommet here in this one to keep this one from rubbing. I don't want those to chafe my wires through. And then I'm going to put, obviously, the front of the AC unit back on. But for the intents of this project, oh, and I'm also going to put some uh, cable hangers up here for this. For now, temporary, um, until I go to do more of the build, just to keep them out of the way. I don't want them hanging on anything and rubbing or anything like that. So I'm definitely going to clean that up a little bit. But for all intents and purposes, this piece of the project is done. I have my camera in. Again, it works just like I wanted it to. Um, and again, as you can see, there's the picture. It's not a huge picture, but if it was to fit in my dash cam, that would kind of stink. The actual screen for my dash cam is only that wide. The camera part of it, see as you can tell, it's not very wide. So trying to use that as the backup camera would, would not be very good as I'm trying to see. I think I like that one a little bit better. And we'll go from there. But I appreciate you guys joining me for this video. I hope that helped maybe somebody get an idea of how they can install a reverse camera on their bus. Um, and in case you in case you missed my, my first video where I did the walk around, this is a 2006 Ford E450 chassis with a Collins body. It's a six window shorty. Um, so that way you'll know if this might have like some of the similar um, outlets, light positioning, uh, channels, things like that for you. And if you like this video, please subscribe. Please click a like on it for me. And if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. I want to try to help people out as much as I can with showing the things that I do on my build. So if any of these things that I'm going to show helps you, absolutely, I love it. That's the whole intent. I'm not here to be uh, some sort of, you know, YouTube, whatever. Uh, I just really want to help people as they're struggling finding ways to accomplish things on their bus just to show what I did and maybe they'll get some good ideas and be able to either use what I did or creatively come up with their own solutions. But I will see you next time. This is Arthur for Arthur's Open Road.